Hello everyone, Jordan here, and today we've got another first impressions video for you guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at Vertical Simulations Norfolk International Airport for X-Plane 11. Similar to my other first impressions videos, this video will be split into multiple segments. One where I talk about the positives of this scenery, one where I talk about the negatives of this scenery, and one where I kind of give my final verdict and opinion and kind of just final thoughts on the product. There's not much more for me to comment on before we begin this showcase, so without further ado, let's begin with the positives of this scenery. So as a little recap of the airport, Norfolk International is the 70th busiest airport in the United States and in the 4th busiest airport in Virginia. The IACO code is KORF and it is located 3 miles south of downtown, I'm sorry, northeast of downtown Norfolk. The airport is serviced by Allegiant Airlines, American Airlines, American Eagle, Delta Airlines, Delta Connection, Frontier Airlines, Southwest Airlines, United Airlines, United Express, and for cargo operations, FedEx Express and UPS. Delta and Southwest both have approximately 20% of market share of the airport, with American Airlines falling with about 7% of market share, and the others taking up the remaining percentage. Atlanta, Charlotte, Baltimore, Chicago O'Hare, Dallas Fort Worth, Washington Dulles, Philadelphia, New York LaGuardia, Chicago Midway, and Newark were the 10 most busiest destinations from this airport. From a 2018 consensus, 3,663,996 passengers traveled through the airport. So as you can see from the airport, there is a plethora of detail all around this airport, and I think that's a great thing. And furthermore, I want to give a huge compliment and credit to Vertical Simulation for really being a development group that likes to do airports that are a little lesser known and not as popular per se. A lot of developers like to do the big name airports, the large airports that everybody knows and everybody flies to. However, Vertical Simulations has the kind of, they have the tendency to do airports that aren't as well known, such as Providence and Islip. Airports that are much smaller and serve as more of a community airport rather than a major hub for an airline. However, just because they did not do a major large scale airport, Vertical Simulations has not short sighted themselves on having high quality. As you can see from the panning round shots, you can see the flags waving in the background of the terminal. You can see the roof textures of the airport. You can see the cars, the static cars, excuse me, in the parking lot, which adds so much immersion to the aircraft, to the airport, excuse me. One area where I felt X-Plane was severely lacking was its jetways. Vertical Simulations has found a way to get around this by using the SAM Jetway plugin, which is a new addition very similar to SOAD in the prepared and ESP world. Because of this, they have very remarkable jetways that look amazing, and I'm very impressed, really, of how good they look. They look like they're from prepared, honestly, and we know how well prepared jetways can look. And this is a really a big step forward for the simulator, at least for X-Plane's sake, because now they have high quality jetways, and Vertical Simulations is leading the way by having all of their airports incorporated with these new jetways. As you can see right now, I'm currently in the Boeing 737-700 Ultimate in the Southwest Airlines Desert Gold livery here at Gate Alpha 5. You can see the jetway right here is very detailed, and it's connected almost perfectly to my aircraft. Now, of course, it's not a perfect match, but quite frankly, that's close enough for me, and I have no real complaints. You also can see the Southwest Airlines um, placard on the jetway, which adds to the immersion, and I'm really impressed that they go through their way to make sure details like this are included. You can also notice that the gates around it do not have this sticker, because that's how it is in the real world. Some airports and some scenery developers, especially for X-Plane, sometimes get a little bit lazy and they don't do this much detail into their jetways. However, as I mentioned previously, Vertical Simulations is practically leading the charge with jetway detail in their sceneries, and I'm very impressed. If you do purchase this scenery, you're going to have a lot of fun just seeing how well the jetways interact with your aircraft, and just how beautiful the jetways are modeled and how they add to the immersion of the scenery. Furthermore, the texturing of the main airport is pretty beautiful. There are a few things that could be improved, but I'll mention that in the next segment. Continuing though, I think that the airport is just beautifully textured and it looks like it's an airport that's in Virginia. It looks a little bit dated, but it also looks like it's a nice small community airport. I think they did an amazing job texturing this airport and honestly, it's just remarkable. The trees around it, as we're passing by some trees right now, look beautiful. As you can see, the terminals and the cars look beautiful. And you might be noticing I'm recording this in real time and I'm not really having a frame rate impact. As you can see, the flags are moving in the wind and I'm not really having a frame rate impact from that. And it's amazing that this level of detail can be achieved without a hard frame rate impact. So congratulations, Vertical Sim. I'm very impressed. 
Installing the scenery was very easy, and I'm really happy that they're trying to streamline the process for this. As you might notice in the prepared world, excuse me there, a lot of sceneries are just installed with, you know, an installer or an EXE program. And I think it's amazing that Vertical Sim is trying to go off, go after that, pardon me, and make it very easy for the user. We don't have to worry about layers or editing the scenery config files. All we have to do is just run the installer and we're done. And I think it's amazing that they're just, you know, streamlining the process. Concerning the freighter terminal, you can see that no detail has been missed over here as well. You can see some details and objects on the ground which help immerse the product. You can also see some trailers in the back for FedEx. I think this adds greatly to the immersion because you can physically see these 3D objects and it's just great that they take the time to model them and incorporate them. Some scenery developers simply don't include them or something else along those lines, but I'm really happy that Vertical Sim actually did opt to do this. As I'm also moving to the left, you can also see the detail on the runway and I think it's very beautifully well done. It looks like it's a used and little dated runway, which the real one is, but it's very well done and it's just, I'm very impressed because usually I'm not used to this level of quality in X-Plane sceneries. I don't mean to be disrespectful or anything to anybody, but it's kind of like, uh, there's only a few developers that made really, really high quality airports that were affordable in X-Plane. And I have to say, Vertical Sim is now entering the market and they're really changing the way we see things, honestly. The products are affordable, as I might not have mentioned, this product is $20, which I think is a steal. And furthermore, you're getting amazing quality for a rather low price. As I change the time of day, we can take a look at the night lighting for this airport. As you can see, they did a pretty amazing job with the night lighting, the dynamic lighting, especially with the PBR materials on the ground as we kind of zoom in on that. You can see the detail is just great, especially on the ground. In the lights, it just makes it feel like it's a fully immersive airport at night. It's hard to explain this really, but I think they did a great job finding the mix because it doesn't feel like it's a huge industrial airport like Atlanta or O'Hare or, I'm sorry, Los Angeles, but it feels like it's a smaller community airport that isn't as modern per se, but it kind of works. And what I'm kind of trying to imply and say here is they did a really good job making this airport feel realistic. They made it feel like it's a real airport. And I really commend them for that. Their texturing work is top notch. I'm really impressed here. Another thing I may have forgotten to mention is the small objects on the ground. They add a lot of detail to the airport and they're very accurate in terms of their placement and for the airlines. Over here is where the United, I'm sorry, the Delta package and baggage carts are, as well as United. And over on the other terminal, that's where the Southwest Airlines carts are. This might seem as just, you know, something standard that you shouldn't have to worry about, but there are a few developers that kind of don't pay attention to this detail and they just randomly place these vehicles wherever they can, just, you know, for just for sake. But Vertical Sim has accurately placed these in the correct position for their airlines and it's really well done. They don't really get in the way of the aircraft when you're flying in, but they're also placed where it seems like, you know, they're used and whatnot, so I'm really impressed. Furthermore, as you can see kind of the stains on the ground, I think that's a really good touch to show that this is a used airport that's a little older in comparison to other airports in the United States and that, you know, it gets beat up a little bit, but it, it's, it adds to the realism is what I'm, quite, I'm trying, excuse me, to imply. Now that was an awful lot of positives and that's because I very much so like the scenery, but it's now time to move on to the negatives. One thing I kind of noticed as a negative, sort of, was a bit of the ground textures. As you can see, once you're up in the air, the ground textures look great, but once you kind of get closer to the ground, they look to be a little bit of low resolution. Now this is not really a big problem for them per se, it's for performance and other factors, but it's just a little nitpicky thing I've kind of noticed. Furthermore, in my opinion, I think if they added uh, 3D grass to the airport, that would add so much to the um, realism of the airport. Now, I have not been to Norfolk International in years, so I completely forget if they actually do have tall grass around this airport. I would assume they would, but if they don't and it's actually like this, then my apologies. But I do believe they actually have uh, rather tall grass around this area, and I feel like the airport would have so much more realism if there was 3D grass here. Furthermore, as I mentioned previously, some of these textures here, they're beautiful once you're kind of up in the air, but up close, they kind of look a little bit low res. And again, that could be for performance reasons, for or ortho reasons, for legal reasons even, and it's not really a big 
problem per se i don't i don't see that as a valid reason to not buy the scenery but it's just a little nitpicking thing i've kind of noticed furthermore there's no physical interior for the airport now this really isn't a big negative and this is more again of me being a pet peeve about this but some scenery developers are now taking to, you know, making custom interiors for their airports and having transparent glass right here. Now, in my opinion, that adds a lot to the realism of this airport because when you can physically see what's going on inside the terminal, it just adds to the realism. Now, this is not a big problem. This is not a big fault. And I'm pretty sure that they are considering to do that for their newer sceneries. So it's not really a big problem per se, but it's just a small little thing I've kind of noticed was saying, you know, it would be nice if they had the interior model. It's not a big issue, but you know, it's something that will be nice. I'm honestly kind of sitting here trying to think of things that I think are a negative for this airport. And there's not many, honestly, besides the textures, the interior of the building, and adding 3D grass, there's not much I have to complain about this scenery. I think they did a brilliant job, and I'm very much so impressed. So I guess we can move on to the final thoughts and the verdict. Vertical Simulations Norfolk International is a prime example of an affordable scenery that is high in detail and great on frames. They're really leading the charge with X-Plane with having revolutionary SAM jetways as well as great texturing and attention to detail. I'm really pleased that the developers started to really pay attention and listen to their consumers and make smaller, lesser known airports such as this airport itself. I'm really impressed and I would highly recommend buying the scenery, especially for the low price of $20 of what it is. While there are a few little pet peeve things that can be improved, overall I'm very impressed and I very much so will be flying in and out of this airport and X-Plane constantly because of it. If you'd like to purchase any more of their scenery, such as Islip and Providence, which I think are both beautiful sceneries, you can check out the Vertical Sims website or order via Threshold. Nevertheless, if you guys have enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you enjoyed content of this type, don't forget to leave a comment down below on airports and aircraft you'd like for me to review next. Anyway, without further ado, thanks for watching.